Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Um, I'm not having the best lighting day, you might, you might be able to tell that. Um, it's quite dark and yeah, my I have studio lights but they're in the loft so I hope we're okay with me working, making do. Um, I'm trying to be a bit cosy and just, yeah, just not really care super much how I look because um, I also think, you know, beauty standards and all that stuff is just, you know, it's just a bit shit. So whatever, I'm just gonna be myself and just accept that I just look how I look. I had this really difficult urge to talk about my experiences growing up and it's kind of a theme that has been quite large in my life. And I think I just have these feelings for few reasons including that it's just it's just a part of my life and it's just a normal part of my life and everyone else can kind of talk about their childhoods and all this stuff but I can't really um in terms of the expectations and I think there is something to be said that obviously I have to be careful about when I talk about these things or provide content notes for people because obviously not everyone wants to talk about these things and that's more than fine of course so I think there does have to be some sensitivity around that. At the same time, I just feel like it's quite important for me to be able to talk about it where relevant or when I need to, if those situations are safe and you know appropriate for everyone and things like that. So I've definitely found a really difficult tension between those things. Um, and I also think it's quite important for me to try to express that it's not really about blaming people and putting, you know, the pointing the finger or blaming, you know, X, Y, or Z. I think there's a lot of nuances here. But the main thing is that it's about me and, you know, me doing the things that I need to do in order to heal and in order to kind of progress and to you know, take this experience and integrate it into my life in a way that is helpful and could be helpful for others. I think one of the problems of growing up in my kind of situation is that you always are taught to put other people's needs first. And, you know, so, so much so that it really has had a bad effect on my life. So I think it's really important for people to understand that, you know, I don't hate the people that I'm going to talk about. You know, I might have a lot of anger towards this situation, what transpired, but it's it's very complicated and there's a lot of nuances. And I think I think we could all benefit from listening to people that have survived these things, um, you know, demystifying them. And when we talk about these things, then it kind of helps us to enable a culture where these things don't happen because it's just so disastrous for everyone. Um, there are there is a chance that like family members and or people that know people could watch this video but it's quite small and this is not anything that i wouldn't say to those people involved as well as they know i'm very direct about these things i'm very kind of matter of fact about these things and also there's a huge chunk of my family that i'm not connected with anyway so for me i don't really have much to lose as well and people that are watching this they don't really know who i'm talking about and if they do, basically there's not really a massive connection between those groups of people. Even though I actually feel like I would rather, you know, that would be actually quite nice if there was that connection. But some of the benefits means that I can talk about these things. I think I've already been through the ringer with my family about a lot of things. They've already demonised me to hell and back. Like, I don't really, do you see what I mean? Like, I don't see any, or like that much more can be done and you know it's all ambiguous in terms of uh, anonymous you know we don't really know who I'm you know it's fine like why can't I talk about stuff basically I want to find people that have had similar experiences as well for us to be able to talk and to support each other I think that's quite important for me I haven't found that many people with similar experiences to me the people that I have found have been amazing and we've connected a lot and we talked about these things and I think it's important to say I have a lot of therapeutic support I'm very privileged that I have access to a lot of um therapeutic you know I do a lot of dialectic behavioral therapy um 
to help manage uh, some of the consequences of growing up in these kind of situations and that's been really great so you don't have to worry about me in terms of my support and obviously kind of tread carefully in terms of the rest of the video if you are in a vulnerable um, position or situation yourselves. So just so you have a summary of kind of the themes of what I went through. So a uh, content note, I obviously talk about domestic violence and uh, gender-based violence and sexism and emotional violence. <laughs> violence, 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 violence. Um, I'm like laughing because it's not funny. So, so yeah, just be aware that those are kind of the themes that are being covered in this video. So yeah, so I grew up with domestic violence and it lasted quite a long time until my dad left when I was 19, I think. Um, and they were quite, you know, big on not hitting kids. So the physical violence I experienced wasn't like, you know, um, the kind of stereotypical punching stuff like that it was more like violent shaking and nails being dug into my arms and things like that so it was more I think witnessing physical violence and also um which included like the stereotypical punching and stereotypical I mean like you know that's the kind of archetype of what domestic violence is that's what I mean um the witnessing and the kind of physical violence that I saw and was exposed to was some of the hardest stuff as well as the emotional violence as well so um i think so the emotional stuff is probably the most difficult uh, for me and i think yeah that's kind of an overview some of the most like difficult areas for me is trying to deal with a family that is so kind of broken or at least so not the family that you might choose to have in terms of some people that are supportive and that love you for who you are and all these things. Um, I think those have been some of the biggest struggles for me is kind of constantly having this almost like cancerous or terminal illness feeling within you because of that upbringing about having a family that causes has caused so much pain and continues to cause so much pain in my case. Um, that and thankfully you know when my family split up the issues were much less uh, severe in terms of like the physical dangers stuff like that but still the um, emotional stuff has been quite like hard since um so i think that has been a really difficult part of my life is trying to trying to move through this history and having this sense of disconnect between what family is supposed to be what obviously my family is I mean a lot of people have that because the family construct is really messed up and very narrow anyway and at the same time I think you know I don't even I can't even talk in any way about my childhood um in any way apart from in like a really dark way which is really difficult not only for me but also for other people but at the same time I would like to be able to do that somehow or someplace um I just wished, I think what it reminds me of is really learning the the frameworks in conversations to be able to just check in with people and be like, is this the kind of relationship where we can talk about these things or not, and, and so on and so forth. But uh, I just feel like it's understandably taboo, and that's been quite difficult for me, especially as an autistic person, where I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, some of it, obviously, are all the same, but some of us are very, like, oversharing and oversharing. I actually think, whatever, I don't think that has to be a bad thing. Um, and yeah, and I think, and that leads me on to another struggle, which is, um, obviously my own mental health, um, experiences and being someone who has been exposed to quite a lot of violence, often that can mean that you are also vulnerable to further violence as well. And if you think about it, my introduction to love was that. And so how I thought love was and how I thought my relationships were was in this really destructive field where, you know, it led on to essentially like quite a few other abusive relationships myself because my standard of like how men behave, for example, was so low that that meant that I just thought that was normal and, and 
So obviously that sucks. <laughs> um, and I think that's quite a common thing as well. And interestingly, a lot of autistic people experience um, difficult households and are more prone to being bullied and uh, like a target for different types of violence. So again, this is kind of all reflected in data. And that's the thing what I talk about, I talk about things that are fully backed up by the research and the data. I mean, maybe I have some personal experience that might be exceptions or one-offs, but a lot of the things I'm talking about are reflected in the the facts and the, the work that I've done looking into these subjects. So yeah, and I think another struggle has been um, trying to trying to recover, obviously, and also ensuring that, as I'm saying, like it meant that I was vulnerable to unhealthy relationships as well. So trying to learn enough about myself and my communication styles and my history and you know what healthy relationships are in order to cultivate really healthy relationships I have now you know that's that's kind of a, like a good thing that's actually I've had to do that to just get somewhere where I'm like okay <laughs> this feels good this is like this is a healthy relationship but again I do think that a lot of us a lot of us have unhealthy relationships through, I think the mainstream culture promotes unhealthy relationships as the norm. Yeah, maybe not domestically violent relationships. Again, I think there's an argument for that. Anyway, I do think you could possibly talk about how our culture is violent and how it like creates relationship norms, but that's kind of another conversation. So I'm not say I'm not sharing this to be like I'm so special, I'm so unique. Actually, I'm saying this because I'm saying that this is not unique and that there are specific things that feed into these things happening and, and make these things more likely to happen as well. That's been really difficult to kind of get to a place where I'm having healthy relationships, I'm having healthy friendships and I'm having healthy family relationships as well. And I think the main struggle for me, the main one, is that it has really disrupted my sense of self and my sense of self-love whereby, and I've written about this in my poetry quite a lot, whereby I kind of, I just, I remember deciding when I was 12, like explicitly deciding, but because of everything that I'd been through, I was like, well, obviously I'm just a worthless person and therefore my whole life is just going to be in service of other people and having their needs put first, because why would I, why would I really do that with myself when I'm obviously worth nothing and the people around me can illustrate that by their behaviour and again I think that is a quite a common thing for people that have been brought up in violent uh, families and situations um, where if you have you know psychological warfare happening essentially that you're you try to conceptualize it as a child and you can only really blame yourself because the, the adults are acting like this and they're meant to be the voice of reason so I think that has been maybe the most damaging thing for me is that, you know, I had to, I've had to live with like intense self-hatred for like my entire life. So like, that's really difficult um, to do, especially when it's such a like waste of time because I'm obviously fantastic. <laughs> I'm obviously great. And uh, so uh, bollocks to that. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm just gonna check that my camera is okay. Oh, that's so annoying. My camera, my camera stops recording every 15 minutes or so. It's really, it's really annoying. <laughs>